So, Scarves, from the depths of your garage, <laughs> we now enter the, the very sophisticated and technical world of shock absorbers or dampers. Mm -hmm. Side dampers, right? Uh, these particular ones are side dampers, yeah. So with suspension, you've got different rate things that you want to control. So you have springs controlling the, the general stiffness of the suspension. Right. Then dampers control the speed the suspension is moving up and down. And in inerters, which is something I don't have in my collection yet, so that's for a future episode, uh, control the acceleration of the movement of the suspension. Right. And then you've got the different, you think about suspension, it works in different ways as well. So you have like single wheel bump like you would expect with your road car. And that's what these are for, to corrupt, they call the side dampers to control each wheel. And then you've got the lower speed movement, so you've got your, your heave, which you would have the third element or a heave element for, and roll as well, which potentially you'd want to control the damp, the control of roll, and you'll have a roll damper across. They're all very similar in design, um, uh, and these are sort of mid-2000 uh, examples, but they haven't changed massively uh, in detail for this type of suspension. Uh, and, and would these typically be made by the teams or provided by... Olins or Penske or whoever? Or it does vary by team. Most of the teams will say that they, well, first of all, they don't want to tell you who manufactures them anyway. <laughs> uh, this is a Williams uh, damper. Williams right. have always said that they manufacture their own dampers, which is a large part of the story. So the body, the shaft, lots, Let's of, the, lots of the main structure of it will be manufactured by the teams. But then you have the damping mechanism, so the valves and the shim stacks and all the bits and pieces that actually control the damping. Shim stacks. Which would typically be made by a specialist manufacturer. So when we look at this um, Force India damper, yep. you can see rather than the damping mechanism being on the, the end of the damper rod that goes up and down inside, it's actually been built into what they call these spool valves in the mm. body. And it's these valves have all the valving in to control the damping mechanism. And this one unusually is adjustable. Formula One dampers don't tend to be adjustable because it, it takes up weight and it's not easy to adjust them in situ. So what most teams would do is they'll find a setting that they like and they'll have one damper set up for that. And if they want to change the damping setup, they'll fit another damper rather than adjust the one they've got, obviously testing. And, and how long pieces. would that take typically? Uh, they're quite straightforward. So if you can imagine the, the, the footwell of the car which yes. is past where the driver's feet are in front of the pedals, these will sit in this sort of orientation here. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is, through the outside, is remove one bolt here and then an another bolt up here. And of course, any electronic connections for the sensors that you can have to detect right. the movement. And then you can pull them out. It's only two bolts, but they're very fine bolts. Right. And they're tucked deep down inside. So you often yeah. see mechanics sweating with their arms in the little... But that's the sort course. of thing you see going on in FP1, FP2, FP3. I mean, yes. We're going around the garage, you can see mechanics at the front with one exactly. whether it's brakes or whatever. But Probably it's it's a damper it, switch. It, yeah, I mean dampers nowadays because of the way they run their the, their rigs back at the, the factory, they don't tend to change the setup very much. More often, if you see them changing things, it's things like the springs and the anti-roll bars. 